Good evening, ma'am. I'm Officer Fling. The reason I pull you over is you were speeding. Yes, I'm sorry. Do you have your Do you have your license, registration, insurance? Yes. One second. Sorry, you're right. I was. I hit it a little hard. No problem. Where are you coming from tonight? Uh, Jupiter. I went to dinner with some friends at a at the golf club. And I don't know. Okay. Do you have your insurance as well? Yeah. Um, Which my show? Alright. Let me show you out your paperwork. I'll be right back with you. The woman appeared to understand the reason for the traffic stop and remained cooperative throughout the interaction. After a brief period, Officer Flynn returned and had an unusual question for her. Do you have anything to drink tonight? No. I have one drink about 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Okay, you have any uh, controlled substances, cannabis, anything like that? I have, uh, no, I don't actually know. Uh, I do have a license to carry. Uh, I mean, I have a, uh, uh, no, no, I mean, have you, have you taken any today? Oh, I've taken any today. No, I only use it for sleeping. Okay, if you would step out and do some exercise, make sure you're not on the influence, we'll have you on your way home. Despite her confident demeanor and responses, Officer Flynn remained unconvinced about something. Therefore, he proceeded to conduct some field sobriety tests. Are you able to walk a straight line? Yes. Can you bounce on one foot? Yes. All right, if you would, come on over here for me. Stand right in front of me. Car's off six. Bring your feet together, hands at your sides, and actually put your glasses up on top of your head. Okay. Thank you. Keep your head still. Just as far as you can go without moving your head. All right, give me one second. Just like that, she smoothly completed her first test and appeared to be performing quite well. Additionally, she exhibited no signs of slurred speech or difficulty in walking. This raised the question of whether these tests were necessary at all. I'm nervous because of, I've never been in this position before, but... I'll show you what you got to do and you let me know if you can do it in your shoes, all right? All right. So... Just, you're kind of like stressing me out, but okay. If you would, go ahead and place your left foot on the line for me, please. I mean, I'm not... Obviously... Okay. Yeah. I'm just a little... Nerve wracking, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She performed the walk test admirably, especially considering she was wearing high heels. However, when the officer requested another test, she encountered genuine difficulty this time. My hands are on my sides and I'm looking down at my foot. Yep. That's all you gotta do for 30 seconds. Okay. Just so you know, I have a medical condition where I can't, bend, I can't straighten this left knee. Uh, I can't straighten my knees fully, but I will do... Both of them or just the left side? Both of them. I can show you even if you want me to. I have knee surgeries, like really bad uh, yeah, knee condition. Okay, right. we'll do... That's why I have that we'll do a different exercise then. No, 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 we'll, we'll do a different one. I don't want to put any stress on your knees. The officer did understand her problem, but he wasn't going to leave her anytime soon. Left. Right. Way and West Wind Drive, 479. Left. I was advising, I know which direction. They turned right. three to five gunshots. No contact. Right. After completing numerous tests, she maintained her composure, wearing a smile throughout the process. Finally, the officer proceeded to administer one final test, which appeared to be relatively straightforward as well. 30 seconds are up, stop. And that's it. Right. Do you have any questions? All right, go ahead and look up, close your eyes, and begin.
That was about 41 seconds. All right, for this final exercise, do you know your alphabet? A through Z, not backwards. Yeah. Just A through Z? Yeah. Okay, so again, you're gonna stay standing just like you are. When I tell you to begin, you're gonna tilt your head back and you're gonna close your eyes. And you're gonna recite the alphabet for me. A through Z, slowly and non-rhythmically. That means no singing and don't skip any letters. Okay. So it'll be just like this. G She seemed to have breezed past the test and wondered if she'd be going home pretty soon. However, she had no idea what she was up against. Ma'am, at this time you are being placed under arrest for DUI, driving under the influence of alcohol, chemical, or controlled substance. For driving under the influence, ma'am. Those exercises we look for indicators of impairment and I observe multiple indicators. Oh my goodness. You have this on video tape? I do, ma'am. We have two cameras as well as a dash camera. Do you have anybody that can pick up your dog, or where do you live? To the woman's dismay, she found herself being taken into custody for a crime she had not committed. She also had a dog with her that now needed to be safely taken home. What are we, what are we doing about the dog? Yeah, what are you She said she has somebody in gardens. She might need her phone. Okay. okay. I mean... Yeah. Yes, I was pulled over on to another side and they're trying to uh, suggest that I am under impairment. They have not read Would you be able to come over here and take her dog for her? Yeah, you can come to the police station. I'll meet you over there with the dog. The woman remained oblivious to the unfolding events, but her shock was palpable as she suddenly realized what was about to happen next. She's going to go down to the jail and she'll be out in eight hours. So right what? around eight o'clock. So about Wait eight a second. Hold on. That's standard for DUI, ma'am. I'm not DUI though. Well, I'm when we, not. When we get down house. there, you'll have the opportunity to provide a breath sample. And we then I'll do... still be held eight hours? Yes, ma'am. No, DUI. you don't have to call me right now. It's up to you. What? Like I said, she. Like I said, she's going down to the jail, she'll be out in eight hours, so... No, I'm not... Gonna, attorney's not going to be able to do anything for you right now, so... But I'm not under the influence! Give me a blast, give me a test or something! That's where we're going next. Go down there. That's where we're going right after we sort this out. It's truly disheartening to witness such treatment of the poor lady, who had been nothing but remarkably helpful and cooperative with the police. You pulled me over for speeding, right? Correct. And then I told you that I had one drink at seven o'clock. Well, people tell me they have nothing to drink and then they'll blow double the legal limit, okay? So okay, what, what but, you tell me doesn't have anything to, to do with anything. I understand, like, why here. I am being targeted here on this situation. You're not being targeted, okay? You were pulled over. I observed indicators because of... Because I sped. All right, go ahead and move your feet inside, man. We're not going to debate this. I, no, Turn I, the I'm uh, back camera on. Honestly, no, I'm but really we're, we're not going to debate I, it. This isn't the venue to do yeah, it. We're I on the side of a road. You already... Despite everything, she somehow managed to maintain her composure. She was subsequently transported to Palm Beach County Jail, enduring a total of nine hours for a crime she hadn't committed. Furthermore, she underwent a breath test, which revealed she was within the legal limit. Ultimately, she was released without being arrested or charged. At present, there is no information regarding whether she pursued any complaint or legal action against Officer Flynn or the police station. This incident might have favored the police due to the woman's compliance, but let's see what happens when authoritarian officers come face to face with a formidable victim. It's possible that my is hard because you're here. Two police officers arrived at the residence after a neighbor reported hearing yelling inside. They detained the man, who explained that he was simply speaking loudly to his 87-year-old mother, who had hearing difficulties. However, the officers remained unconvinced, insisting on meeting the elderly woman. I haven't seen your mother. Do you believe, after hearing mother. my mother, I that heard, she is in danger. I heard arguing and I need to make sure everybody's okay inside the house. What did you hear? What was said? I, I just heard yelling. I couldn't hear You what just heard yelling said. and didn't I not explain to the yelling? Did she not explain to you the yelling? She told you she's fine. She's sitting on the toilet and you have to go and see her. 
I do, yes. The elderly woman herself told the cops that she was okay, but the officer still persisted in meeting her, leading to a vicious rant by her son. You have to physically see her. Yes. What do you think? Somebody's up there holding a knife on her or something? It's possible. How do I Oh, it's possible. It's possible that my hard because you're here. Welcome to YouTube. And um, I expect you to get a medical person here to see if she's all right because you are not qualified to see if she's all right. Okay. Go get somebody now. The man's frustration escalated, and he was on the brink of directing his anger towards the cops, whom he felt deserved the brunt of his emotions. This intrusion is so necessary. You have no idea how hard it is to take care of old people. I'm sure it's extremely difficult. But I just have a responsibility to make sure everybody's okay, and that's why I'm here. You don't have the responsibility. A medical person has a responsibility. I have to make sure that there's nothing criminal occurring within your home. Good luck. Okay. You're not coming in my house. Okay. The man's anger was completely justified, as he explained the reason now. Despite hearing his explanation, the cops remained unapologetic and showed no signs of remorse. I'm a caretaker. My mom is 87 years old. And she's deaf. And I have to yell at her when she's in the shower to get her to hear my instructions. So the neighbors called the police on me because they think I'm screaming and damaging my mom. And they won't take my word for it. I opened the door, they asked my mom if she's fine. She said, yes, I'm freezing because I'm naked on the toilet. Yet they won't take her word for it either. And I'm not about to let a cop in my house to see my naked mother. After hearing the man's explanation, the male officer, who had been relatively quiet up to this point, decided to intervene, only to be quickly put back in his place. I, I don't mean to step in. Uh, You're not going to step in, and I'm not going to take any instructions. Okay, I, so I'm just here to observe, but I want to let you know my name's Officer Amel, okay? I would please ask you that the yelling at this point is not necessary. I understand. The yelling is necessary. I'm making sure I have witnesses. And that's totally fine. And, just, like, and it is totally before. fine. And please don't give me instructions to not lo to not yell. Okay, sir. And like I said, this is recording. And this is recording yes. right here. And I have it. Despite the officer's insistence on seeing his mother, the man stood firm, adamant that they wouldn't be allowed inside without a warrant. I understand that, but unfortunately we need to be able to see your mother. But unfortunately sure you're not going to. The police are not going to because they do things that are not right. A medical person can do something that's right. So when you go to check on a person for safety, bring a goddamn medical person because you guys shoot people. Sir, all we are going to do... You're not going to do anything. If you step through me, you are hurting me. Moments later, another police officer emerged onto the scene from the bushes, but he wasn't going to escape the person's wrath either, as per usual. I see your mother. No, you're not going to see my mother. Come up here, please. And if you put those gloves on and think you're going hands-on, there will be hell to pay. I am auto and video recording you as well. Okay. Are you the supervisor? Nope, supervisor's on. Then don't say anything to me other than your name and your badge number. It's right here. It's right here. And it's also right here. What is that? I cannot read. 1K25. Name. Gonzalez. Thank you. As the officers tried to assert dominance, the man made sure to clarify everything once again, demanding a medical supervisor to be present on the scene. Step back. I'm not shutting the door. Shut the door. I am not shutting the door. You have been told that, I'm not going to do it. If you're not the supervisor, you better stop trying to flank me. What is going on here will be dealt with when a medical professional gets here. Not when armed people come to my front door. Finally, the supervisor arrived on the scene, hoping to defuse the situation. However, the man made it clear to him what he had been dealing with, ensuring that his grievances were heard loud and clear. Uh, I'm waiting for a medical professional to check out my mother. Police are not coming into this house. Okay. What kind of help does she need? She's waiting for me to wipe her ass and get her dressed after a shower and a toilet. Okay. But I'm out here because they won't let me go get her dressed. And I said, okay, supervisor. And then she said she has to see him. And that's not going to happen. A medical person will see her.
The man then dropped another bombshell on the cops, revealing that he wasn't alone in the home with his mother. He was also taking care of someone else. I take care of my 87-year-old mother and my 59-year-old yeah. brother, yeah. and he doesn't speak. He's been paralyzed on one side, and he's angry that you're here. Okay. Just here to help. You're not here to help. You're here to barge into my house. I have alleviated her concerns. My mother told them she's fine, that she's freezing to death on the toilet. Despite the sergeant's repeated questions for the person to calm down and stop yelling, he had a different agenda in mind. I'm not angry either. I'm just making sure whoever called me in knows that my mother is deaf. My mother is deaf. She cannot hear. So I have to talk loud to her. Can you grab him, please, and hold on to him till I'm done with these guys? I'm not giving my name. I haven't broken any laws. Finally, after waiting for a good 10 minutes, the medical supervisors arrived inside an ambulance. Hello. I only need one of you. Rollo, in the house. Oh, no one's not coming. I'm pulling all over. Yeah. Caring for an elderly individual is undeniably challenging, and the man had every right to be angry, considering he had done nothing wrong, but was simply helping his mother. My mother is 87 years old. She's very hard of hearing. She's sitting on the toilet wet because she got out of the shower and had to poop. She's at the top of the stairs. They have been told by her that, they, that she is fine. You are going in as a medical professional to see if she's been damaged or is hurt. Okay? That is your job. You go talk to her and you come right back out, please. Okay, then I will get her dressed. Okay. The two of you only. Perhaps that's the only recourse when dealing with a corrupt cop who won't take no for an answer. The man was well within his rights to deny the officer's entry without a warrant, and he had made it abundantly clear to them where they stood. He recognized the potential for the situation to escalate, given the power dynamics involved. This guy got off the hook luckily, but what happened with this elderly man surely puts the stain on the entire law enforcement. What? You're not getting my ID for sitting in a parking lot, pal. Sorry. Because 62-year-old Kevin Hinton was 11 hours into a road trip after he met his newborn granddaughter in Oregon. Feeling exhausted and drowsy, he pulled into a parking lot at Terrence View Park to take a nap while watching a movie. Moments later, Sergeant Clay Hilton from Spokane County Sheriff's Office came over to his car and woke him up. How you doing? Good. You be an audio and video recorded. It's a crime to be in the park after hours. This is considered a park. Uh, so... All right, I'll go find another place to watch a movie. All right, you got your ID on you real quick? No, I don't. No, you're not shutting the door. You're not free to leave. Uh, yeah, I am. You're not. Why am I? Why are you asking? Oh, I acting like that? Because you're I kind of being I'm, rude. And being... I'm being rude. Yes. Kevin calmly agreed to leave the parking lot, and the sergeant had the opportunity to de-escalate the situation. However, he had different intentions in mind. And how is that? How is that? I'm trying to explain to you, you're in the park after hours and you're committing a crime. That's a you're crime? Not, it is, yes. No, it's not. You want to bet? It's a civil offense. It's not. Do you have your ID Really? No, I don't have my ID on me. Five, one, I'll take another. I'm not, you're not getting my ID for sitting in a parking lot, pal. Sorry. Yeah. So. Kevin adamantly refused to provide his details to the officer, asserting his innocence. But the sergeant persisted as if he was deliberately seeking confrontation. Whose car are you in? Pardon me? You're not shutting the door on me. I'm not shutting the door, I'm rolling the window down. Now you can shut my door. I'm not shutting the door. I need your name. You are not yeah, free I'm to not leave. I'm not giving you my name. Okay. Despite the old man committing a minor offense, the corrupt sergeant showed a complete lack of empathy for his fellow human, further perpetuating his wrongdoing. Putting your shoes on for you. You're not going anywhere. And why is that, sir? Why? Because you're refusing to tell me who you are, and you're probably going to end up going to jail. Oh, for not giving you my name. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, then... You have at it. Okay. Come on. 
Come on, stand up for me. Turn around, face the car. Sergeant Hilton forcibly removed him from the car and then proceeded to exhibit some of the most terrible instances of police brutality. Turn around, face the car. Don't, don't, don't put your hands on me, pal. You're listen. Gonna, you are going to get hurt. If you I don't am. Listen what I'm telling you. Are you audio video recording this? I already told you that. Get on the, hey, oh. get on the ground. You're under arrest. Dude, get on the ground. Dude, oh. get on the ground. Jesus Christ. What part of that? I'm stand. I want him code six. You're under arrest. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Yes! The old man was viciously beaten and dragged out of the car, marking only the beginning of the horrifying ordeal that followed. Okay, we got I can't. I can't. Oh. Give me your hand. Okay, you know. Your hand. Okay. Your hand. Okay. Your hand. What are you doing this, man? What the fuck, hey. man? Look at the fuck what he did. I didn't do anything. You pull this way. You pull this way. <laughs> Kevin was overwhelmed with hysterical sobs and cries of anguish following this unjust brutality. Despite the emergence of more officers on the scene, not a single one spoke out in defense of the poor man. Okay. okay, okay. I will, I promise. Get out. Uh, okay. Okay. Ouch. Uh, guys, please. Please. What part of that did you not understand? No, I didn't do anything. Uh, you hit me so many times. Why? Why did you hit me? The agony and distress persisted as the poor man bled, now in dire need of urgent medical attention. God. <laughs> Why? Why? Now you want to tell me your name? <laughs> oh, my name is Kevin. Oh, please. Oh, what is it to me? Why? Why? Why did you do anything? Uh, uh, please, I can't breathe. Oh. The unnecessary use of force could have been completely avoided. Mr. Kevin was in a state of shock as he grappled with the sheer absurdity of the situation. Can I sit up? Let's search him real quick. Can I sit up? Sir. What was that? Yeah, sit on your butt. <laughs> Later on, the body cam was muted by the sergeant as the officers kept walking around the scene. Kevin Hilton was so beaten up that the jailers refused to book him, and he was instead sent to the hospital. Kevin sustained eight broken ribs, a punctured lung, a shoulder injury, a severe concussion, and a disfigured lip as a result of the violent arrest. Kevin was charged with resisting arrest and obstructing a law enforcement officer. However, both of these charges were later dropped, and two months after the incident, Sergeant Clay Hilton was placed on administrative leave. Finally, in February 2024, the Spokane Police Department completed the investigation, found the sergeant guilty of using excessive force, and recommended second-degree assault charges to be filed against him. Now, it's up to the Spokane County Prosecutor's Office to determine if the charges will be filed or not. However, despite this, Kevin's attorneys are still filing a civil lawsuit against Hilton and Spokane County.
reason for the stop was when the woman later identified as Brittany gave a one-finger salute to Officer Patrick Akers when he was conducting a traffic stop. Officer Akers got offended by her behavior and decided to do this. Thirty-five, two fifty-six. If it's possible, could you make my location? PD two fifty-six. Put me at the thousand forty-nine of Gardenia. Number ten forty-nine, Gardenia. Yes, he decided to conduct a traffic stop on Brittany just because of that. He followed her car until Brittany stopped her vehicle on the side of a street. In the past context, Officer Akers was known to be a woman abuser, and Brittany had been one of his victims. So this is that female Trevino. She flicks me off as I'm going back to back of my patrol car, fails the single left hand to go into the left lane. She flicks me off, so I just wanted a second to make contact with her. What Officer Akers claims here is that Brittany flipped him off, meaning that she showed him her middle finger, mostly used as a sign of abuse. Officer Akers must have felt it insulting, but a police officer must have thicker skin. How's it going? Officer Akers, New Braunfels Police Department. Okay. I know who you are. That's fine. Well, the reason why you being over for flipping you off. No, ma'am. The reason why you are, you are retaliating against me. You turn your sirens on and everything ran over here like a crazy person. Okay. Well, ma'am, the reason why you being contacted is you failed to signal lane change when you flicked me off. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and step out of the car. Step out of the car. I have three officers here. He's hurt me before. Please don't let him. Yeah. Could you? Would you mind, Henderson? Go ahead and detain her. In cuffs. You're under arrest or failed to signal lane change. I'm under arrest for failing to signal a lane change? Yes, ma'am. I'm under arrest for failing to signal a lane change? Yes, ma'am. The encounter quickly escalated as Officer Akers was so eager to show his authority that he asked Brittany to step out of the car to be handcuffed. Brittany was already in so much fear and pressure, she requested the other officers on the scene not to let Officer Akers near her. Surprisingly, she was being charged for failure to change the lane. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You guys just know this is bullshit. You guys just know it is. You want me to transport or you, you think better? Yeah, Danny, Danny, would you mind just transport? You don't have to do anything else other than transport. I'll be there. PD 2v6. Can you go ahead and uh, get me next rotational record? That female is my custody. Uh, I believe it's going to be Brittany Trevino. What's that? 
Yeah, she has a driver's license, but... I'm not turn this off. In Texas, failing to signal a lane change is generally considered a traffic violation, not a criminal offense. But what happened with Brittany here was a violation of her rights. Yeah, she has a driver's license, but... Well, she, she comes down the street, comes right towards me, and as I'm walking back by the car to do nothing, she picks me off. Mm -hmm. And then as she does that, she gets on the lane, fails the single lane change. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think it's going to be an issue? Huh? Do you think it's going to be an issue? Given your history, Yeah. So, any other person you would write a ticket to, right? Yeah. So, that's, that's how you have to treat every every interaction. Okay. So, if you would normally write a ticket for this person for this, just because that in the past you've done this, this, and this, right? This is something that you would normally write a ticket for. Then write a ticket for. Yeah. You want me to go ahead and lose it? Yes. Yeah. I've Sergeant Scott, who arrived on the scene to observe the whole situation, seemed to understand what was going on. Looking at the desperate and visible fear in Brittany's eyes, he decided to teach a lesson to the ignorant cop. So let's write the ticket and go about it that way. Sounds good. All you're going to do is give her more ammo. All right? Yep. So write the ticket, just fill it out. Officer Akers was ordered to let Brittany go with just a citation because no possible law can justify the arrest of Brittany here. What? Hell? Okay. What? That's all right, Brittany. All right. You don't think they're the best one? Well, yours is pretty thin, right? Mm. What do they mean? You would think, I don't know, because I never touched it. I was always like, and they're like, you could stab right through it. And I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, you guys want to wear this for bullets? Are you kidding me? What do you mean? I've never tried. They did tell me though that it's not right here. Brittany was calmed by Sergeant Scott's decision. She must have felt that not all cops are the same. Some also always go by the law and stop those who make wrong arrests. She was given a citation by Officer Aker, who must be regretting his actions by now. It all didn't stop there because Sergeant Scott decided to warn Brittany about her actions as well. Either it was a finger salute or a FU sign, it wasn't right at all. But Brittany's response to that was quite remarkable. So here's the thing, regardless of what your history is with Officer Akers, your, your intense hate causes you to flick him off and then you committed a traffic violation, okay? And you just gone on about your day and not worried about flicking people off or anything like that, none of this would have happened. I know, but... Did this... Oh, I did? No, I didn't. Let me get your signature on So, that's not pleading guilty, that just promises to take care of that ticket, okay? None of it ever is good on those automated ones, okay? So, here's the thing, right? 
had you just gone on about your day, right? However, instead of just letting Brittany go and teaching the officer a law lesson, the sergeant kept on talking to her and almost made her cry. So your, your intense hatred is causing you to do other things that is, that is drawing attention to you. situation with you. I watched the video. I, saw, I know everything that occurred. Okay. I know about the court stuff, everything that occurred. If Officer Akers had done anything wrong, he wouldn't be here right now. Right? That's a hundred percent true. It is. So, right. I get it. That's your first amendment. If you want to flip people off, but what it did is it caused you to create a, to create a hazard into a traffic infraction right in front of an officer. Right. Citation, we're all complete, so you're good to go whenever you want. But my advice is to move on, right? Because you clinging on to this is causing more problems, right? It just did right now. Correct? I understand that bad things will happen to me if I. Brittany sobbingly replied to Sergeant Scott, but somehow this bad encounter ended with a citation. Luckily, she didn't have to be transported to jail just for carrying out his First Amendment right. Mm -hmm. okay. you, can, you can choose to be defined by the, your past, or you can decide what you want to do. Right? That's it. But if you choose to be defined by what happened to you in the past, then you will always continue to be that person. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's... Regardless of what y'all's history is, you need to move along with it. Right? If Sergeant Scott didn't appear on the scene, would this encounter have ended this peacefully? The sergeant saved the woman from arrest, but you will be surprised to see how this next cop stood up to protect this man's rights. I don't mean anybody no harm. I don't have my gun on me. My What's gun's in the car. Intentions? Huh? Can I ask you what your intentions are? My intentions is, I just want, again, I don't see these every day, so I stopped to take pictures. <laughs> On January 15, 2020, investigator David Gear was filming outside Odell Oil Company in Belton, South Carolina. He stayed away from the trespassing area and only filmed the place from the outside, even though there were signs saying no trespassing or filming. However, this day of exploring was about to take a swift turn. The whole facility, well, both of them really, get some information on them. I, I, I'm sorry, brother, I can't hear you. A whole lot of information, honestly. A whole lot of it. Say what? We can't just give out our information. Oh, no, no, no. I, I didn't have any questions about it towards y'all. I can kind of find out what I need out this way. Who are you? I'm an operator here. Operator here. What's your name? Uh, so that's irrelevant. Uh, I understand that. Yeah. Cav, your name? That's irrelevant. Okay. Well, I was just asking. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Though. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Right. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, inside the fence is. Yeah, what, what you need pictures for? You said what I need pictures for? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't say it right now because it's not published. But you can call the people, that's fine. Okay. I'll be along the way somewhere. I'll be along the road somewhere. I, I didn't drive. I'm a step ahead of everybody. Two people from that oil company had some serious issues from Mr. Gear recording on public property. They didn't even bother to introduce themselves, but started warning him not to film here. David was nice enough to respond to them politely. I'll be alone here somewhere. I'm not leaving. I'm just walking. I promise I'll be in the area. And when they come out, can y'all come back out, please? Thank you. So he didn't want to give his name. He didn't want to give his name. But we're here. And this is private property, but... That is a public utility 
right here and there. But they're gonna, they're gonna call the police. So we're gonna hang out until they call them and see how this goes. Mr. Gear smartly stated a South Carolina law saying trespassing only applies within fenced area. The two men, however, decided to call someone on David and the way this man treated him was shocking. Send somebody out here to talk to me, all right? Dude, that's about to start raining. I wonder if he's gonna get out the vehicle. It's finna start raining, which is the crazy part. So I'm actually going to get soaking wet. But I'm, again, I'm in Belt, South Carolina at the oil company on a road here, 33 feet from the center line of the road. I have their property line um, in my phone and there are public utilities all right here. Some are in their property, some are right here, which is outside of the fence and their trespassing signs are on the fence, which is beyond me, it's very beyond me. All right, brother, how you doing? Just filming, and I'm trying to figure out why they're following me around here, and I can't figure it out. Well, kind of somebody suspicious. But it's fine. But you know, you're allowed to take my picture also. That, that's that's totally fine. Now, whether or not you can get it, that's uh, that's between you and your camera. But um, that guy here has been following me around, and then you came out here to take my picture. If, if you turn your phone the other way, you get a better picture. Turn it sideways. No, no, turn your phone sideways. They, that, that's right. Uh, I can't. I can't. But I'm trying to figure out where y'all are following me. It's like nobody here understands the rights that I have granted to me under the First Amendment. That's what's crazy. You know, this is all public property right here. Yeah. No, this is a state property. Which is public. State property is tax funded, which makes it public. So my tax dollars, your tax dollars pay for it. I mean, that's fine. Uh, and again, I told the people over here to call the police, that's fine. I don't mind talking to them. But you see that public utility right there? If I want to walk all the way to that pole and record this property, I can because that's because the city put that there. So that city property is I don't mean anybody no harm. I don't have my gun on me. My What's gun's in the car. Intentions? Huh? Can I ask you what your intentions are? My intentions is, I just want, again, I don't see these every day. So I stopped to take pictures of all these oil, of all these big oil um, wells here because I, I, I don't see them every day. But it's like people are freaking out about it over a camera. Well, it's, it's kind of a touchy. But y'all have cameras all over y'all facility. Oh, we do. Uh, so how is my camera any different than your camera? I have no problem with that. I don't. I'd be more than glad to talk to him. Okay. Thank you for coming out. Yes, Thank you. Mr. Gear claimed that he was on public property and GIS data supported this too. In South Carolina, the government can control areas in different ways. Utility poles on government land don't always mean public property, but the oil company employees decided to call the cops on him. Public easement here. And I was taking pictures this way, that way, and back here, and they freaked out. They completely freaked out about it. And they was like, well, I'm gonna call the police. I said, that's fine. I, I don't mind talking because there's no crime being committed here. They freaked the hell out. These guys here, that, that, that guy right there. Hey, come over here, buddy. Yeah, you, come here, please. I just need you to inform him of the First Amendment that I'm allowed to record here in public, and I can be on my way. That, that's all I need from you, Officer Parker. Can you please just inform him of my rights through the First Amendment? And I'm on my way. I'm sure y'all have been pumped, prompt on it because we sued Anderson a, a long time ago. I don't mean any hurt, harm, or danger by it, but these guys here completely freaked the hell out. And I don't know why. I just need him to be informed of my First Amendment right and I can be on my way. I'm going to come across the road because I got to get it on film that you told him for my protection. Deputy Parker calmly listened to what Mr. Gear had to say. She understood all the First Amendment rights Mr. Gear had at that time and decided to teach some of those to the people working there. I told y'all I was coming back, buddy. I didn't want to be rude. I just want you to be informed and hear from someone else that I'm completely allowed to do what I'm doing. So, with him taking pictures, it's not a problem. Okay. Um, if he goes on the property... Just making sure. Can you ask him to put video on me? I'm allowed to. I, I tried to tell you that so we can be cordial. The first time you saw me, and I was cordial. No, I told you that I'm allowed to do what I'm doing. It's it's all on camera. I can run it back. It's all on camera. You'll see it on YouTube later. I promise. I'm allowed to do what I do. That's all it is. And I wanted her to come tell you because I didn't want you to think I was being a jerk about it. It's completely legal. And y'all have to understand that while in public, you can be filmed. There's no expectation of privacy at all, buddy. At all. What, what can we what can we do if we, we build a brick wall? Put him on from there. Uh, but as far as him being out here taking pictures, video, and I can't look 
can't do anything about it. I try to tell you that, but y'all waste their resources. Deputy Parker claimed that Mr. Gear's filming likely falls under First Amendment protection. She educated the oil company on trespassing laws and showed commitment to the First Amendment. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well, sir. Like I'm you? all right, thank you. I'm David, by the way. Hey, David. Thank you. It is. That's why I'm out here, actually. I'm about to go jump on my bike. I just tried to help these two gentlemen out here. And they didn't want to understand me, so they called this sweet officer out here yeah. and wasted resources when they could have asked me the same question. And I, I gave them the same answer, but they didn't want to listen to me. So now they're on the internet looking like fools because I tried to tell them. <laughs> and those weren't my intentions. I tried to walk away, but then I saw her pulling up and I figured that they called and wasted her sweet time out here. Sorry you had to come out here, Officer Parker. You're fine. Just do me a favor. Don't go behind the Oh, I won't. I won't. Uh, and, and I told him, I have their property line on my phone. I checked the GIS survey. As long as I'm well within public property, it's a public utility pole. There, there, there are no trespassing prior notice starts on the other side of that fence. I have no plans of breaching their property at all. No. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for coming out. All right. Yes, it was a pleasure having you here. Fellas, I'm sorry about the misunderstanding, but at least now you understand, all right? Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Today, we saw instances where corrupt police officers were held accountable by their honorable counterparts. This demonstrates that there are indeed good cops within these institutions, committed to upholding the law and ensuring that their colleagues do the same. I believe these officers did an excellent job by following the law and refusing to show leniency to their fellow officers. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video and make sure to subscribe subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.